Developed by Artificer and published by Devolver Digital, this is Sumerian 6. Sumerian 6 is an action strategy game, top-down stealth, but it's not turn-based, and that's a really big selling point for myself. I like that kind of real-time stealth games of old, I'm a fan of shadow tactics and the like, and this game speaks to me, but it really does have a unique bite of its own. But before I get into that, right off the top of this, I am going to give this an 8 out of 10. I absolutely think this game is worth your time. If you're a fan of stealth games of old, or if you have the patience to really sit through something like that, this game is very rewarding. Don't mind me. As mentioned, Sumerian 6 is a top-down strategy stealth game, and that puts you into the role of these Sumerian 6, that is, as you kind of progress through the Nazi-occupied countryside. So you are pushing back the Nazi Reich, and really does not need more motivation than that. But what really makes this game different from the rest, or different from other stealth games in general, is the Sumerian powers. So there is a bit of a story element to that, we'll touch on that, but what really makes this game fun and unique to play is the different abilities that these six have. Uh, some characters can melt bodies away, uh, other ones turn into a giant bear. There's a lot of weird kind of wacky elements to this game that absolutely makes it a fantasy science fiction kind of uh, alternate history, but that said, there's a lot of fun to be had here. Pawing through the story elements myself, I found it really was secondary to the action. The story, like I said, is very um, not necessary when it comes to the motivation required to smite the Nazi horde, but <laughs> what I did find was that you do get a bit of interpersonal kind of connections with the different characters as you come along. So you're breaking through different areas, freeing, and recruiting different party members kind of as the game goes on, and they do have a bit of a story to themselves. Uh, the bear guy, for example, he's awfully tortured, and you learn a bit about that, and you learn a bit about the bad guys in consequence of that, but I found it really wasn't necessary for my own enjoyment. What really did matter towards my enjoyment of the game was that core action loop. There's really, really big maps, very long missions in this game, and I, I was very pleasantly surprised that the the bit of a briefing that you get before most of these. You'll be speaking to a character in a, a cutscene sort of style, and they'll present the map. Here's the objectives, here's this, here's that. They kind of draw on it, here's where you're coming from. And I liked that. It was kind of an old school touch. Kind of reminded me of something that would have likely happened in the war. And it gave me some orientation for where to go, because these games, these maps rather, are just incredibly long. Some of these missions will have you going through an entire countryside. And towards the end, the, the objectives kind of slide a little bit more. You meet a new character, and you're kind of put on a different direction. And that got very, very long, but I think that's kind of the difficulty towards this game. You are incentivized to be stealthy, of course. It's a stealth action game. But you can also kind of run and gun your way through. Some of the characters are able to really uh, offer much more of an offensive or a defensive edge than some of the others. For example... You have a kind of generic character you begin with. He can hop around different bodies, but other than a pistol, he doesn't really have a whole lot in terms of combat. The bear character, as I keep mentioning, he can turn into a bear, of course. The were-bear. And you actually need him to crush through some of the other tougher enemies. Some of the armored um, kind of foe you come across can't be defeated under normal assassinations. And that really forces you to kind of be creative with these different elements, these different abilities that your characters have, and I found that to be really, really rewarding, but also really frustrating at times, because this is my one gripe with the game. The difficulty spikes are a little, a little unforgiving. Like I said, these missions are very long. You might find by the end of the mission, you're kind of forced into a combat scenario, and that can be really difficult if you haven't been properly caring for your teammates throughout that mission. What I mean by that is there are health kits around, there are different uh, ammo depots and kind of experience you can gather along the way, but that does come with a risk. You're risking your characters to kind of go into these extraneous kind of areas and, and risk that reward. But, like I said, you could get to the end of that mission, you just don't have enough health, it's really brutal, and you have to perfect your way through the entire map. That can be very frustrating, but again, this game is not supposed to be easy. 
And, and this is a perfect example of that. You get through these kind of issues, these really hard spots, these bottlenecks, and that, that triumphance brought me into the next mission, brought me into the next character, and kept me going through the story. Graphically speaking, this game is kind of muted. It has a bit of a softer, kind of cartoonish tone to it um, that, that may raise some red flags amongst people, but this actually looks quite pleasing to the eye. I found this was nice. My, my concern with that is that when you're zoomed out too far, it's a little hard to see what's going on. This is not a very nice game to watch being played. But you zoom in, and as long as you have control over those characters, there's no issue there. The graphics suit the game just fine. I would have liked a little bit more of a cinematic touch to some of the moments in the game, but there are a little bit of stylistic breaks here and there. And some black and white, some cartoonish looking again, but there's interesting kind of ways that, that didn't seem so stale throughout the game. Especially what wasn't stale was the audio. I really like the kind of backtracking <laughs> soundtrack in this game. It's not ever really intense, it's not really vocalized, it's more of an instrumental thing, but it kind of accompanies the game perfectly. I found that it was just a nice, it wasn't causing any sort of stress, it was sort of adding a little bit of relief. One of the more important details in the production values of the game was the full voice acting in this, and that really goes a long way of selling the story. Even though the story didn't really speak to me, the the best way to represent these characters is always full voice acting, and I was pleased to see that is the case here. I shall escape the fate of men. It's not an incredibly realistic game, it doesn't have very crisp, you know, 3D audio, it's not that sort of game. But the actual action loop of the game is really what brought me through and caused a lot of enjoyment for myself. That storyline really wasn't doing it for me, but like I said, I don't need any motivation to crush the Third Reich. Just pushing through the game with these characters and their, their lovable quirks really sold the game on me. Like I said, this is absolutely an 8 out of 10.